It's been several months since my last mountain bike camping trip, and I felt I was overdue for another one. This time, I brought someone along for the ride. So with plans in place, we got underway. Let's go! This video has been brought to you by Cycling Deal, a leading Amazon seller of cycling parts and accessories. And Tandem Adventurers, where you'll find lots more tandem bike related content. We departed in the middle of the day on our tandem mountain bike on what would be a 50 mile round trip ride with an overnight stop. We're going straight. The first third of the ride would be on pavement, about half of which were residential roads and the remainder on a local paved bike path. After several miles of the bike path, we merged into some vehicular traffic by crossing over onto a nearby road. This was a more direct route to the first off-road segment of the trip. Less than five miles later, it was time to turn off the road and onto the single track of the Markham Woods mountain bike trail. We were blessed with beautiful weather and here some fantastic trail conditions as well. After a few miles of the Markham Woods single track, we emerged at the main trailhead and stopped to fill up our water supply.
This was the approximate halfway point on the first leg of the trip, and to lighten our load, we carried just enough water to get us to this point. Johnny. All right, that's it, that's all we need. From here onward, there would be no further opportunities to obtain water or any other supplies. More water, John? Yeah, more water. With that in mind, we filled our water capacity to its maximum. Yeah, once this is done, we'll be off. We're here at the Markham Woods Trailhead by the restrooms over there. We just stopped at the water fountain to fill up our water supply. We, um, we rode several miles of the mountain bike trail coming in over that way. And now we're here. We're going to be on pavement again for probably about three, three and a half miles. And we're heading this way up to the Seminole State Forest where we'll be camping for the night. And just like that, we were rolling again after a short five to six minute stop. Three to four miles later up the road, we arrived at Bear Pond, the southern entrance into the Seminole State Forest. For the next eight to ten miles, we would be riding on unpaved gravel roads deep into one of Florida's great wilderness areas. Upon arrival at Blackwater Creek, we decided to stop for a quick break. So what's going on, John? So we've got a faulty hydration pack here. We've been riding for the last, I don't know, eight to ten miles. After, well, actually, since we filled up water at Markham Woods, and this thing's just been leaking and dripping all over the place, and it was like, I can't find the leak because it seemed like it was leaking in several places, but I just noticed this part screws in here, which I didn't realize. I thought it was just the hose just plugged on there. And this was actually a little bit loose, so I tightened it. How so is it now? It doesn't seem like it's leaking. When I turn it upside down, it still yeah, I can it tell. still drips out of the cap. But I've got this on there tight. I can't tighten this anymore. But as long as it stays upright, I'm hoping and thinking that it would be okay. The other thing, too, is mm -hmm. I think it was leaking out of the bite valve at the end. Yeah, see, it slowly drip, drip, drip. So... This is actually a brand new piece of crap. It's just junk. <laughs> Luckily, we don't have far to go. We want to hang on to as much of our water supply as we can. Otherwise, I would just dump this out and throw this away somewhere. But we need our water, so. Okay. That's where we're at for now. Oh well, it is what it is. Yeah. Challenges of the road trip. We hung out at Blackwater Creek for a few minutes before proceeding, as it's one of our favorite nature spots in the Seminole Forest. Moments later, we were rolling again. By now, it was getting late in the day, and we were starting to run out of daylight.
So I've been walking now, walking the bike for about almost a quarter of a mile, I would say. Um, I don't know if you can see Shemaine, but she's right up ahead behind that palm tree. Um, this road that we're on has just turned to really soft sand and uh, the steering and control and stability with this tandem bike going through the sand has basically all went away. I can't even hold a straight line. So here we are. We're in the middle of the state forest here. Um, it's 12 past 7 in the evening. And we've been walking the bike for, I would say, about 10 minutes? Yeah, I don't know, maybe not that much. Yeah, maybe about 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. If I had to guess, it's a little bit more than a quarter of a mile, three-eighths of a mile maybe. Mm -hmm. And so we've come to this transition where the ground has turned to sand. All the sand is way back there, which was unridable. Now we're on some grassy terrain, as you can see up ahead, which is a lot more firmer ground. So we're going to get sure back and ride. I don't know how far we'll be able to ride, but mm -hmm. we are very close to our campsite right now. It was smooth sailing once we got back on the bike, and less than 10 minutes later, we arrived at our campsite, this beautiful rustic cabin in the middle of nowhere. Once inside, we wasted no time in setting up our lighting, followed by unpacking our bedding and dinner supplies. An open-air structure is completely off-grid and as such has no electricity or nearby water supply. We've even got like a backcountry chandelier. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to eat. Dinner time? Yeah. Hey, where's your crackers? Your crackers are in that orange bag. Okay. Ramen noodles. Alright, so here's how this works. You open it up like so. You open it up like so. So this thing just leaked. Ever since we filled it up with ramen noodles, it's been kind of useless. That's good enough. That's all you need? Yeah, because it's when you, you put sure? it in, when you put it inside. Yeah, that's a cup. All right. Mm -hmm. I'll give it some gas. <laughs> give it some spark. Woo! All right, put your cup fire. up on there. A few moments later. Good. It's almost dinner time. What's for dinner? <laughs> Ramen noodles. <laughs> okay, that's it. I'm gonna put it's a almost water dinner in time. Here. Hold on. I'm gonna get, can I get some more water so I yes. can make you? All right, go on. Okay, you need more water. More water. Here, you got a full one right here. Thank you. Wait, why don't we use the water out of that thing first instead of using our bottled You're water? Right. So at first I reached for one of the several water bottles that we brought, but then I remembered that we had drinking water stored in the bladder of that faulty hydration pack, and I figured it might be a good idea to use that up first. Ooh, uh, uh, just like what you had before. That's cool. That's good? Yeah, that's good. You sure? Yeah, I'm going to put it here and okay. let it boil a little bit Are before. cover it no? no. Uh, while I'm waiting, I'm going to eat some burritos. Not yet. What are you doing? So you're eating, I haven't eaten yet. Shemaine, what say you? <laughs> breakfast, of, well it's not breakfast, but I was going to say breakfast of champions. Ramen noodles. Hey, where's my crackers? Your 
Crackers are in that orange bag. Okay. Here. The crackers should be in that. Okay. Alright, I'm gonna sit down and eat something, huh? When was the last time you had ramen noodles? I know I never made it. It's been a long time, I don't know. It's good like for camping. Very easy to make. This is hot. Oh, look at the moon. I told you. How beautiful. What time is it? Wow. I told you it'd be like around 8 o'clock. Okay, well it's almost 9. Close enough. And with dinner out of the way, it was now time to get into a change of clothes and get our bedding set up for the night. Because we were camping in a cabin, we obviously didn't need to bring a tent, but we still needed our own sleeping gear since the cabin was only equipped with very basic wooden bunks. Enter the deluxe air mattress. Your pillow at home. <laughs> that is small. Just let it sit there. It'll. I want my feather pillow. It's supposed to self-inflate. But... Pillow for me, right? That's your pillow. No, I'm serious. What? That's your pillow. Look. John, what the hell is that? <laughs> no, no, no. Wait a minute. Let me see this. Look. John, Susie, what is this? Don't knock the night that light down. What's this? This is a pillow? That's your pillow. Oh my gosh, that's a, that's for my Barbies. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Barbie pillow. Yep. Oh my god. Seriously? Look, it's like my phone. You can like... So this is Charmaine's bed. Nice, big, and deluxe, and comfy, even with complete with small peanut pillow. <laughs> and this is my bed. conditions. There's just something about getting away from it all and immersing yourself in nature. breakfast we began the process of cleaning up and packing our gear for the return ride home you look like you're dressed ready to roll oh already all right guys we're uh, about ready to pack up here and get ready to start the ride back i just wanted to give you a quick walk through a rundown of what we brought with us on this trip and how we carried it on our bike so first of all this is our tandem bike our ellsworth witness um front here got a couple of rechargeable headlights this was a mount I put on to carry some stuff we've got these awesome bags three of them these are from stashers this one I carried some camera rigging gear tripod uh, tripods and selfie sticks and whatnot had two water bottles down here this we had some food stuffs inside a pouch in here we had uh, two more water bottles 
on the stoker handlebar here. As you can see, the frame of the bike has capacity for four bolt-on bottles. So we had four bottles there. I also had a container here that had um, some more food stuffs. There's a spare tube. Coming around to the back of the bike, we've got a Topeak seat post rack. Of course, being a full suspension bike, um, we could not use a rigid mounted rack. So we went to the seat post rack that allows vertical movement of the rear wheel and the suspension. And then we've got these um, Rhino panniers. And we had our sleeping gear blankets on this side, a uh, small inflatable pillow and our bug spray here on this side. Moving over to this side, I had some more camera rigging, camera gear, and also all of our food stuffs were in here. Our cook set were, was in this outside pocket. Now this up here is a trunk bag, which actually fits on top of this whole setup here. In the trunk bag, we had our change of clothes. I had uh, one of the drones inside of it, controller for the drone, our spare batteries, charging cables, whatnot, stuff like that. Okay, so that's the bike. Oh, and we had a little uh, seat bag which has our tools like chain breaker, tire tools, stuff like that in there. Okay, moving over to the table, just quick obvious basic stuff. Mine and her helmet, glasses. This is our toiletries, toothpaste, soap, deodorant, whatnot, bug spray. Uh, drone number one in battery. Here's the controller for that drone. Uh, drone number two with a spare battery. Yes, we used two drones on this uh, to make this video. Uh, we had about four uh, microfiber towels to clean up with. Over there is our tire pump, some diffuser diffusers for the lights. There's some of our camera gear, selfie sticks, tripods, and whatnot. There's five of our bottles. We actually had a, com a total of eight water bottles that we brought with us. This is our little charging station where we're charging cameras and our phones and whatnot. This was a video, photo and video light that we used. This was a headband uh, LED light. Shemaine wanted to listen to music and stuff when before she went to bed, so she brought her headphones, 360 camera. This is our cookware set, two more water bottles. Our foodstuffs, uh, some of which are contained in here. We got some oatmeal. Last night we had uh, ramen noodles and chips for dinner. We brought some dry milk. There's our little tiny portable gas stove, which is awesome. I love it. Uh, we got some Gatorade powder in a bag there. Over there is our audio recording station. Uh, another change of clothes and our silverware and miscellaneous stuff. So now moving over here, this is the area, the bunk area of this wonderful cabin where we slept. And we brought a fairly large Coleman inflatable uh, mattress. So that's where we slept last night. A uh, couple of blankets. We had the blankets rolled up and packed in the bike, obviously. A little tiny pillow for Shemaine, which she didn't think was large enough. And I actually used a carrying case of some of my camera gear with some of my towels on it for cushioning, and that served as my pillow. Initially, I was going to sleep on this ultralight mattress, but it did get a little bit chilly last night, so we both ended up sleeping on that mattress and just to share the warmth. This is the we inflatable, uh, actually this is the pump that we took with us to inflate the mattress. We got the mattress up to size and pressure fairly quickly. Shemaine slippers, um, looking upwards. There's one of the lights that we used last night to light up this area. It's actually a really nice little cube light for photo and video. My clothes are airing out. Uh, I had another light up there. Another one there, and those are lights that I can remotely control the brightness right from an app in my phone. We had another light up here, and then another one over there, which were dim. That one over there, for some reason, I think it malfunctioned because it was fully charged, but it cut off kind of quickly. And here are our shoes from Cycling Deal, who is sponsoring this video. Huge thanks to them for that. Cycling Deal shoes comes in a wide variety of models in both male and female styles. The shoes are lightweight, fit great, and have been very comfortable on our ride throughout this trip. These shoes are manufactured in a factory that also produces cycling shoes for many other major brands. So you're getting big name quality at a fraction of the price. 
Search for Cycling Deal mountain bike shoes on Amazon for these and many other great Cycling Deal products. Without further ado, it was time to get everything packed up and ready for the ride home. That goes like that. We're packing up to leave now and we zip them. This right on the inside. No, it's fine. You sure? It's not it's fine. Shemaine, we're all packed up. You ready to go? Ready.
All right, so we are packed up. We're ready to hit the road. We've got about a 24 mile ride to get back home. Shemaine is ready to go. Awesome. And here is the big bike, all loaded and ready for the ride back. had this trip planned right before a designated hunting period and so we encountered several groups of hunters making final preparations and setting up for the season. Hello! for us so we don't have to squeeze that little opening on the side. And with that, we were now leaving the Seminole State Forest as we got closer back towards civilization. A couple of miles would involve riding through a construction zone and back up over the Wakaiba River Bridge. We were back into residential territory about two miles later. running a bit low on drinking water, so we turned into the trailhead at the Markham Woods Mountain Bike Trail for a partial fill-up. So we are a little bit about, we're a little bit more than halfway back on the homeward stretch. Stopped here at Markham Woods to refill our water supply, or partially refill our water supply as we were running low. And so there's our dusty bike and we are gonna hit, get rolling again. We've got about 13 and a half, 14 miles left to go until we get back. We rode the Markham Woods single track out to the unofficial back door or side entrance to the trail system a few miles away. 
It was a little bit of a challenge to maneuver the big bike through the narrow gate that separates the trail from the road. Once back in the road, we had about 11 miles remaining to complete the trip. Bikepacking adventure has been a great experience for us both. Looking forward to the next one.